CCU Orlando and Aikens Counseling Center present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 32, Where is God? And now, your host, Rev. Cynthia Alice Anderson. Welcome to the Authentic Spiritual Journey. I'm Cynthia Alice, and I am the host of this show, and I am the proud owner of Experience of the Soul podcast channel. And I'm always so happy to be in 818 Studios with my fabulous producer. Hey, this is Dave Croft. What is happening, everybody? And happy February. It's February. 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 It's, yeah, it's a big month. It's a say. big month. It's a big month for lovers yes. because of the 14th. It's a big month for me because yes. of my... Why? Do you want to say why? Mm-hmm. I'm turning 50 this month, friends. <laughs> Five, oh, oh my gosh. boom, boom. So I'm excited. I, I'm not one that's scared of ages or birthdays. I really yeah. love them. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm uh, 45, and I feel like I'm just and getting... Holding? And holding? No, I'm just kidding. No, just turn 45. <laughs> I feel like I'm just getting started, just getting warmed up. I know. You know? Yeah, 50's awesome. I... Uh, I had a friend the other day say, oh, 50 was my favorite because I quit caring what anybody thought <laughs> at 50. And I was like, mm, gosh, I, I stopped that a long time ago. Have you but. done the thing where you kind of think back to your parents at your age and yes. you can't see them doing any of the things that you do now? Like, for example, when when my, when my dad was 45, I would have been 15. Yeah. You know, and I cannot see my dad <laughs> sitting with my mom and playing video games. Well, like that, that's well, that's true. Doesn't com- compute like does not at compute. all. I can't even picture that happening. And I don't know if that's because just you know g- different generation. You know, he's a he, well, he was a baby boomer, mm. or if it's because as a kid you don't really you know you don't really get to know your folks on that kind of level. You know, or at least you I don't. didn't. No, you don't. You know, and you don't think about your parents kind of laughing and cutting up and. Right, being stupid with each other, and right. they had to have. They had to have. I, I would imagine. Yes, one would imagine. one thing. So would ha- have assume. you have you done that? You know, now that you're hitting fifty, which is a real kind of milestone, right? Yeah, well, a little bit. You know, my mom had me really late in life, um, so I was nine years old when she was fifty. So, um, yeah, that uh, that has occurred to me a time or two. And what's also occurred to me is how so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing. She would, in fact, do. Oh wow! <laughs> um, I was surprised the other day when I when I thought back, and um, you know, I am really at the place where you know, we all have stuff, you know, with our folks. But man, you know, my mom did certain things right. And is it really that you know, fifty is the new sixty or whatever, yeah. or sixty is the new fifty? However, you do the math. Yeah. Or is it that we're all getting older, and so yeah, so. <laughs> Right. Go, we keep moving the goalposts. You keep moving the goalposts. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of that, that reminded me of my church anniversary, too, is this month, which is yeah. uh, 11 years. I was uh, talking to my um, my board president, now former board president, the other day, and I said, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it's been a year since that huge celebration mm-hmm. CCU did for me, and it was really over the top and a lot of fun. <laughs> um but yeah, here we are in the month of February, and once again, I'm doing what I love to do, which is talk about spiritual principle, and the show, uh, very simply, is a couple friends today hanging out and having spiritual conversations, and I'm happy to be bringing you this um, today. All month, we're going to be looking a little bit at... Um, how are we moving into recovery on every level, uh, spiritually, emotionally? Um, some of you are even recovering uh, physically. So uh, I, I can guarantee you that the things we're going to speak of all month, no matter what journey you're on, whether it's a physical healing, emotional healing, or even just moving into something new, all these things will apply because these are spiritual principles that we teach part of every journey. And today's title is where is God? So this is show 32, where is God? And I can imagine if you're listening and, you know, you're above the age of five years old, you are asking this question. Mm -hmm. And even if you are under five, there are some I know that ask at a very young age, where is God? And the, the metaphysical answer to that is, well, it's like the fish asking, where is water? But What I'm speaking of when I say, where is God, is the moment of the journey where it got real tough. 
where we were at a moment of crisis, where we were um, feeling alone. Uh, maybe we were in a physical challenge, and we said, how could God let this happen? Uh, maybe even a loved one passed, and we said, where is God? How, you know, why is this happening? Um, or where is God? I, I drink every day because I don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. Where is God? You know, so so this is, a, um, it's often called an existential question. Right. Or for me, it's, wow, this situation or the state, this, the state of the world or whatever is so bad, then how, how can God possibly allow this to happen? Or how, yeah. how, how, how can we have this going on mm-hmm. uh, or this has happened to me and uh, it, it, it defies logic? Yeah, if God's in control, man, I, you know, yeah. how can this be happening? I mean, I, I, think, um, I think back to Twin Towers, and mm-hmm. I think for so many of us as Americans— we said, how could this have ever happened? Um, and how, where is God, you know, in the midst of this? And and I think that question is ultimately about the search for meaning, you know? Yeah, and it's it's a, it's a theologians, even, even very studied theologians struggle to answer that because mm-hmm. there's not a simple, there's not a simple answer that feels, that's going to satisfy or, or, or quell any hurt that you may be feeling. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it, for, for, for in, in my in my experience, like if I say, "Where's God?" Well, God is uh, God is within, or uh, everything works in His plan or His timing, and and that's that's very uh, bitter salve to someone who, mm-hmm. you know, maybe is suffering with uh, the loss of a child to cancer, a child to cancer. That's yeah. to 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 be told uh, it's all in God's plan that. Then that sounds like a crappy plan. Is that okay yeah, to say? I hate, yeah, I hate God's plan. Then, yeah. Right. Um, well, and it's interesting you mentioned that because um, a critical part on my journey was um, I had a nephew. His name was Paul, and he did pass away from childhood leukemia. Mm. And we were very, very close. So his, uh, so his mom was my oldest sister. And she hates when I say that, so I better be careful. <laughs> uh, one of my sisters, especially um, since you just told us your age. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, she, but she doesn't listen to the <laughs> podcast. I can assure you. So, um, but she, um, so she had a son, and he was just five years younger than me. So we, of course, we grew up together. He was the first grandchild, and uh, you know, because there is quite an age difference. Among all the siblings, um, he was only five years younger than me. So when I was 10, that means he was five years old, right? So, you know, he was like a younger brother. And, you know, we grew up in the church. Uh, My mom was the um, president of the board. She became a lay minister in the United Methodist Church. She, uh, if the doors of Red Oak United Methodist Church opened, we were there opening them, I can guarantee you. So we had a, um, we had a strong connection with the church, um, but uh, I wouldn't have what I would consider a real awareness necessarily of uh, God as I do now. I mean, I, when I heard God in church, I always picture God in the sky, and um, I certainly didn't have what I would call a personal relationship. What I did have, though, was a connection with nature, and um, I would sit in the woods, and, and um, there was this gorgeous area. We, we lived uh, at the end of a dead-end street, and we had a lot of uh, about 16 acres of land, and uh, over the years, my dad sold some of that off. But but as I was young, we had some of that, and I would go and and just sit on this uh, big rock that I, of course, called the big rock. And I would go sit on the big rock, and I would just, you know, be there, and I would feel supported, and I would feel connected. And then down the hill from there, too, there was this creek that ran past a house that my um, my granddad had built. Well, my granddad didn't really build it. He designed it, and my mom and her siblings put every stone mm. in it. They, they collected stones from the neighborhood and built the house out of the stone they found. Um, it's still standing wow. um, today. So my connection was that. I mean, it was like, you know, I would be in the creek, and we would play, and in the 
and in the rocks. And that was really uh, my spiritual connection. We went to church, and that was our community, but I didn't have a relationship with God as, as I was hearing about God. I loved to sing the songs. I loved the people there. Well, when things started happening in my life that I didn't understand, um, I had a real hard time, and I wondered, where was God? You know, the first thing was when I was uh, very young and suffered abuse. The second thing was when Paul got, my nephew, got leukemia. I said, where the F is God in all this? And that's a question I think that we all ask. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a good answer. Because... You know, I thought, how could this happen? You know, it's one thing to say it from the head level, like, okay, Twin Towers, what? You know, that's a terrorist act, but when it hits, and and when you're not intimately affected. Right. But with a death or something, you say, "My, I don't understand my world anymore. You know, and that was definitely a part of my journey and continues to be. Because if God is supposed to be everywhere present and God is supposed to protect me, where was God? And so I'm just going to let you sit with that for a minute. Where was God when that was going on? That place is a very lonely place. It's a place of feeling uh, broken. Uh, Abandoned. Abandoned, forgotten about. Um, It's like, okay, I am here all alone, where is God? So if you've ever asked that question, you're in good company. <laughs> yep. And asked it, answered it. Uh, asked that myself coming down to Orlando. You know, we talked about that whole journey. And, yep. and uh, when ain't no kind of hurt like church hurt, right? <sighs> and so feeling feeling run down and steamrolled by people that not only you trusted, but people that you, you, people that you elevated to, and gave them permission to watch over you, you know, people that you depended on and people that, Mm. that said that they had, had your best interest in the name of ministry, in the name of God. Yes. Yes. In the name of God. This is happening yes. in the name of God. Right. And whoa, that's... Boy, that's such a... Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, why, you know, why would, you know, it makes sense that you stayed away from church a while. Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you? I want no part of this. Yeah. If this is if this is the deal... Yeah. If, if this, this is, is the, how this goes... This is the contract that everybody agrees to, you're welcome to it. I'm going to be over here not getting shredded. Yeah. Yeah, and and the same goes with family. I mean, that's supposed to be your one safe place. Yeah. You know, and then when, you know, to add insult to injury, and then your world starts falling apart, you know. um, There were hard, several hard years in there where, um, you know, my nephews uh, struggle with leukemia, um, my dad's alcoholism. It was like, you know, I've got to figure this out. And in my um, in my care and love of my nephew, um, I was pretty desperate to find um, a way to help him. Um, you know, like I said, we were really close. We even shared a room at one time. And uh, there was a TV preacher on. His name was Oral Roberts. And he spoke so much about healing and 
you know, just send me this money or call this prayer number. We'll send you oil. Put your hands up to the screen, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. And I got the oil and uh, it didn't work. I tried it. I prayed with my nephew. I, you know, went to some of his doctor appointments and, um, you know, uh, it was a, it was a, you know, a moment of kind of, I don't know why this word comes to my reckoning in my mind. I, I could not get my head around why this would have been happening to. Uh, yeah. How does a little, how does a, a nine-year-old brain square that? You know, well, you, on Sunday morning you're yeah. singing, you know, it is well with my soul. And, yeah. And then you're like, and here's a little boy dying of leukemia and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it doesn't sure doesn't feel well with my soul. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I prayed and it's like, God answers our prayers. I'm like, no, he doesn't. Uh, he hadn't been there for me. If this is God answering prayers, you know, I, this, this is, you know, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Um, you know, is, am I not praying right? Should I do it different? I mean, you know, what, how can I make this better? And it's like life on life's terms, friends, is a very, very difficult and, You know, later in life, it wasn't till I don't know, I was probably 30. Uh, I was 13, by the way, when my nephew died. Mm. And I was probably 30 when I came to peace with it. And I still not 100%. There's still tenderness there. Totally, totally. And... It, what was I going to say? It's, well, when I, what I, and it was through really the study of unity principle, it's like, okay, if God is in me, that makes more sense because God outside of me controlling things is not working because if these are God's ideas, these suck. Right. <laughs> if God is this puppet master. If God is a puppet master. You know, pulling exactly. strings above the stage. Yes. And. I had to come to terms with, okay, God is not what I think. Mm. And um, I was in church leadership um, in my teens. Uh, When I was 15, I started directing the adult choir, and uh, I played some downtown at First Baptist Atlanta under Charles Stanley. I played in the orchestra some, and, um, you know, I went to a Christian school. Uh, Of course, there I was told how bad I was. That's a whole other thing. Um, But... uh, when I was, I don't know, I'm, I'm saying probably 30, 31, I came to the conclusion that God was not outside controlling me, and the only way to find God ultimately was to do that from within, that the, the outside God is not working. Yeah, it's not a big sky finger, just, you know. Yeah, it's touching, it, healing this person, but not this person for reasons you'll never know and just yeah. find a way to be okay with it. And Yeah, and so um that was a very very difficult uh awareness because as we talked about last show about when we're growing and evolving, we have to leave behind old ways of thinking and being. And it was a real beginning to my growth. Um to begin to come to terms with some of that, you know, um, when I thought back, you know, in my less early thirties to my nephew's death, I thought, okay, I was praying for healing. I was, you know, doing everything. And I thought, you know what? I can't control someone else's journey. You know, I can't control someone else's soul journey. Um, I was praying for healing. Did I get it? And if it was in me, the answer is yes. Mm. But I didn't get what my personal self or my ego wanted because I wanted him to live. Mm-hmm. So I, that was when I began to understand that we are souls on a journey. And You know, um, he got leukemia because his dad was in Vietnam Mm. and was, you know, a victim of the whole Agent Orange thing. And that's what doctors said. The reason he got the leukemia was 
because of the dad's exposure to Agent Orange. So what I began to realize is, okay, God is not outside of me controlling things. A God is a choice I make every day, you know, and so coming to terms with that was a huge, huge part of my journey. And I bet if you're listening now, it was and continues to be an important part of yours. Now, you know, you said you were in church leadership and everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well after, you know, for really what, oh, you, yeah. 13, 15 years, 16, 17 years, whatever? Yeah, I mean, I've effectively, effectively, I have worked in churches for 35 years. So was that just, as you're approaching your 30s where you finally came peace to it, was it just a cognitive dissonance that was ultimately on a collision course yeah. with... With uh, with understanding divinity and and understanding theology, and it's just a slow motion kind of. Yeah, I mean, it definitely built over time, and um, I um, also around that time I met back up with my godfather. My godfather was a United Methodist minister, and he was extremely powerful uh, a minister, and he also taught at Oxford University in England. He actually taught American history, and uh, he visited out of the blue um, to see me. He went to came to see me in Seattle. Um, I mean, I hadn't seen him in years. It was a really weird thing, but uh, I think that was also a part of me accepting where I was spiritually because mm-hmm. we got to talk about things. And he was a very, very forward thinking, and he had been a United Methodist minister, but definitely had his own understanding of the divine that was much more similar to mine. Right. Um, yeah, so it was a slow, a slow boil. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was a slow boil. So, uh, um, after the break, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more. And friends, I hope you're connecting with my story as you're hearing it, because this is an important part of the journey. So when we come back. And when we come back, um, you know, there, there's hope. Absolutely. There's absolutely hope. So, uh, don't go anywhere. Yep. We'll return to the program in just a few moments, but first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, CCU Orlando, who has helped make this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey possible. Christ Church Unity is a welcoming community dedicated to transforming lives, celebrating diversity, and supporting soul growth. CCU Orlando is located at 771 Holden Avenue in Orlando, Florida, with Sunday services at 9 and 11 a.m. You can stream services live online as well as learn more at ChristChurchUnity.net. We would also like to extend our thanks to our podcast partner, Aikens Counseling Center. Cassandra Aikens is a licensed mental health counselor dedicated to creating sacred space where clients can explore their own inner process in a safe, non-judgmental, and supportive environment. She works with individuals, couples, and groups who are seeking to live a more authentic life. Aikens Counseling Center is located in Winter Park, Florida, and can be found on the web at CassandraAikens.com. We now return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey. Welcome back, and we're glad you're joining us for Show 32, Where is God? And I hope you uh, stayed with us after the break. That was uh, an intense first half, I know. But friends, I really want to always talk about the aspects of the journey that might be difficult, because... It's easy to feel alone in that, and I'm talking about this specifically today, um, especially after all this dream, vision, goal work. You know, it's like it's positive. Let's do it. But frankly, there are times on the journey where we just are questioning God, and that's it's important to honor that aspect. Absolutely, and it's it's authentic. It's real. I mean, so to sit here and pretend that. Everything's always great, and yay, my faith is like a rock always. You yeah, know, right. It's just not, it's just right. not real. Yeah, I like to call that aggressive positivity. <laughs> um, so, so you know, right before the break, you know, we were talking about, uh, I was talking about my own specific journey and how, um, you know, it wasn't probably until my 30s I started, you know, really coming to terms with the fact that God was not controlling everything. And that is actually a freeing thought. Uh, it's a freeing thought because it means I can change my own life. And so I can't change, you know, what happens outside of me. I can't change someone else's journey. 
But what I can do is I can change my response. I can um, work on healing my own life. I can look at my resentments, my disappointments, my places I need to forgive. And I can do my spiritual work. And so, you know, when I realized, okay, um, God is not out there and I'm not a victim to what's happening. I can do something about my own life. And I realized, okay, but every soul is, is that way. And so even though the human me um, still, like I say, I'm still not 100% happy um, with um by any means, in in losing my nephew who was so close to me, but I understand now that from a from a really uh, grounded place that that just must have been his soul journey this time yeah, around. And you're not required to be happy about it. You're no, not, because it sucks. No, that right. sucks real bad. It, yeah, I mean, it's just like I I just and then I my my uh, compassion for my sister having to go th- through that. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, having to go through that. So, um, I, so there's a, it's a a mature spiritual place for us all when we can begin to see, you know, life is a journey of the soul and some souls, uh, have a short journey. Some have a long journey. Um, but we even have, um, some choice in how we do that. So, uh, so, I hope for you, friend, as you're listening to me, that you're understanding that in your aspect, how you respond, what happens, what you create, that is all your journey. And ultimately, we are always receiving support. We are always receiving love. We are always receiving blessing. And uh, even when it doesn't feel like it, because the things happening outside of us are not what we want, Um and, you know, in the case of my nephew, what I know is he was closer to God than I was mm. uh, going through all of that. Uh, it was uh, miraculous to watch his soul know exactly what to do, that he was connected to the other side. You know, before his passing, he was hearing music, he was seeing angels, he was completely dialed in. And I, you know, I, I didn't know any of that. Um, so, so his soul was fine. You know, I had to deal with the humanness of, you know, losing somebody I loved, Mm -hmm. you know? So there is, um, there is for me strength and hope in knowing that, um, God is an inside out job that, um, knowing God, um, experiencing God, that is really up to each and every soul. And, um, takes a lot of strength and courage to move yeah, through. I keep thinking back to Forrest Gump, you know, that the yeah. movie, which kind of balances that nihilistic, we're all just, you know, floating around on a breeze. Mm. But, and then the, the other uh, predestination and all of that. Yeah. And not to mention, you know, Lieutenant Dan and his journey and, you know, God is watching. What a crock of, you know. Bleep. Yeah. And, uh, but he, he ultimately makes peace with God, not because God gave him his legs back, but because he achieved inner peace. Yes, yes, yes. And everything that we do experience on the journey is for our soul growth and evolution. And so is there some grand design? I mean, I believe there is. Mm -hmm. I speak of it as our spiritual DNA, you know, that, um, you know, uh, Dave, your journey, your spiritual DNA is different than mine, but thank goodness that in this work, we're, we're learning from one another, you know, we're sharing an aspect of the journey, but bottom line is you're still in your individual journey and I'm still in mine, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, as an individual soul, everything that happens, everything that comes my way, the good, the bad, the indifferent, how I respond, how I grow, how I take charge of my life. All these are the God aspects that then I have the opportunity to, uh, to experience. So I want to assure you, friend, if you are in the question of where is God, that if you stick with it, you will find, uh, that answer. And ultimately the answer will come from within you and trust it.
trust it and hang in there with us because um, in the moments where we don't know, um, it's difficult to move the next step. But I'm telling you, it's worth it to stick in there and struggle, you know, wrestle yeah. with the angel, as as we know from the scriptures, wrestle with that angel and and keep looking because ultimately the answers are about where is God. It is going to come from within, and it does bring a peace. It brings a joy. It brings um, compassion for others, but it brings a groundedness um, even as you walk through uh, the journey. Yeah, and I, I found strength on the other side of that. Absolutely, you know, yeah. having you know walked through that stuff, and 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 I don't even pretend to uh, act like like my loss is equal to your loss, or uh, or or you and know when, yeah. you know what I mean. It's yeah. like we're not we're not just all you know comparing, right, right, hurt here, but because uh, because I've I've not walked through you mm-hmm. know. Uh, I've had students actually. I've had we had a student back in Memphis who mm-hmm. uh, moved to Memphis, and his daughter had uh, cancer, like like mm-hmm. uh, ocular cancer. This mm-hmm. little baby, baby, mm. and just turns out that uh, Memphis has St. Jude there, mm-hmm. which offers free cancer treatment. Uh, at no cost to the parents, and if they had not been in Memphis, they they would never have had the access to that. All that to say is um, finding strength on the other side of that, and not just strength of faith, but uh, strength in knowing that things are going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, that, that's been, that's been my journey. Is, is yes, you know everything's going to be okay. It feels desperate and dire now. Mm-hmm. But uh, I keep coming back to I need I need to have this tattoo on my other arm. God did not lead you into the wilderness to starve, mm-hmm. which I've said on the show before. But mm-hmm. and I get is that strengthening faith? Is that what that is? Is that, yeah, is that what that looks yeah. like? You know, is yeah. walking through the fire and uh, and uh, all these Wesleyanisms are coming to mind. You know, iron sharpens iron and all of that. But well, when I um, this reminds me that when I found my way. Um, to into uh, into twelve step, and so I was not um, in addiction to alcohol or a substance. Uh, my addiction to <laughs> was to approval, I guess, which is why I ended up in Al Anon because uh, I guess my issue is caretaking, not not taking a substance. But um, you know, this was all about the time. When you know all this, all this was going on in my early thirties. This was a really um, or late twenties, I guess, early thirties was a really ripe time in my spiritual growth because of so much I was learning and doing, and I did a deep therapeutic process then. And um, anyway, I found my way into Al-Anon, and uh, I, so many people uh, in my group, you know, in recovery, you have what are called home groups, and so that was my main meeting. I went to it was on Tuesday nights. And of course, my um, my sponsor <laughs> to this day, I I I think of her, and I loved it because her last name was Divine. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, she helped me so much uh, see myself and and see my caretaking tendencies and and things like that. But in the group, um, there were people that had a lot of bad history with church and were really struggling. With God, the whole idea of God, and um, you know, many of them had abuse in their homes um, due to you know alcohol or drug addiction, and uh, o- often uh, people would say uh, th- this kind of became a joke um, in a way that you know you don't have to have a God that doorknob can be your God. Uh-huh. Just pick something. And I had a friend who said, "My God is a black lesbian named Bubba." <laughs> And I instantly loved her. Um, she became a good, good friend. And, you know, she said, I just need to know that there's a power greater than my personal self. In other words, greater than my situation. And I thought that was a great, um, she said, I, I can't have any traditional idea of God. And she had a wonderful uh, 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 a boyfriend and stuff. I got to know them. They were He was in recovery and she was in Al-Anon. I got to know them really, really well. And, um, so, you know, for her, 
she couldn't have a traditional view. And once she started doing more of the recovery work, she was like, oh, God is. You know, that God is not, it doesn't matter really what I call God, but as long as I have an understanding, you know, and in 12 step, we say the God of my understanding. And it doesn't have to be a guy in the sky that's, that is controlling with the, with the puppet strings. Um, ultimately, I think on your search, you are going to end up with, you know, God is here. Mm. And there's a higher aspect to all of us that is the divine, that is holy, and that we meet and know on the level of the soul. And so, you know, if you are struggling with anything right now, whether it's depression or addiction uh, or even a physical healing, I want to assure you, God is right here in the midst of it and, and to not give up until you find it. Yeah, to not give up until you find it. Um, I want to speak to also just a minute about uh, physical issues because um, in my work as a minister, I deal with a lot of people in chronic pain with um, uh, cancer, with you know uh, reactions to medications, um, all, all sorts of things. And I myself years ago uh, went through a really difficult physical journey where uh, you know the doctor said, you know, you're you're lucky to be alive, kind of thing, and. So, uh, again, in that, the question of where is God and the process. But each time I get there, um, something shows up and shows me, you know, the strength and the hope that's there. So I want to encourage you, friend, if you're, if you're feeling lost right now, stick, in, stick with it. Because God is in you. God is present. God is available. Even if you don't feel it, God is within you. God is all around you. But God is not controlling you. Uh, as a puppet or the things around you. You are a soul. God is here. God is with you now. And God will be there when you uh, move into uh, more of that awareness. So we want to encourage you so strongly to to keep searching, whether that's, uh, you know, if you're in a healing need, reach out and talk to other people, you know, dealing with where what you are. Find a support group, you know, get the Get the support you need. If if um, you know you're really struggling with someone in your house in addiction, find the right program for you. Whether it's a CODA meeting, whether it's uh, Al-Anon, and we'll we'll put some links in the show notes to um, Alcoholics Anonymous and to Al-Anon as well. And from there, you'll be able to find uh, any you know any resources you might need. Um, even if you're dealing with uh, grief, also, I want to encourage you to find a grief support group. Again, don't stay alone in this question. Um, find yourself a spiritual community that supports you doing the work of your soul. Yeah, you're definitely not alone. Yeah. And you're definitely not alone in feeling this way. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you, uh, there have been many that have walked the same path, yeah. and so uh, you're 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 not um, abandoned in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and when you do the work that you're doing right now, when you you know have this understanding, when you move into this awareness that God is here now, that God is with me, you will be just the person to lift up somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, in in that situation. So. Uh, one of the things I learned in the recovery model um, that I've, I've spoken of so many times is that, you know, they enc- uh, the encouragement is uh, even if you feel like, you know, you've, you've had some victories and you're feeling better about life and you're feeling more stable, rather than never going to a meeting again, you show up at meetings because you may be um, somebody's, uh, somebody's strength and hope, it, the, you know, Part of what we do is share our experience, strength, and hope for others who may be needing it right now. And it's what we do at CCU Orlando every Sunday spiritually. So many of the people in our community have been abused uh, by the church, uh, have been abused physically or emotionally. And we are there to lift up, to support, to honor, to support your growth, and to love you no matter where you might be, you know, on the journey. So remember, friends, you are not alone. We are uh, in this together. And we encourage you on the journey to uh, continue to search, continue to love, continue to pray, continue to, to speak with others. Uh, the most important thing is to not stay alone in this question. 
because uh, we want you to know hope, support, love is there for you. And we do thank you for listening today. We honor exactly where you are on the journey. Our prayer is always that you are lifted, you are supported, and you are blessed. So we're honored to bring you this today, and we are lifting you up, as always. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about recovery all month long. Yeah, so, next so, couple weeks at least. Yeah, yeah. So, so be sure to uh, to tune in next week, and uh, we'll have even, even more. Yeah, bless you on the journey, dear friend. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey, presented by CCU Orlando and Aikens Counseling Center here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. This channel is made possible through the continued support of our angel patrons, Dove Borland, Angela Martinez, Peter Gibson, Paul Caswell, along with our partner patrons, CCU Orlando and Aikens Counseling Center. If you would like to help be a part of bringing shows like this and other programs to the channel, please consider becoming a patron. For information, episode show notes, and details about our other shows on the channel, head over to experienceofthesoul.com. And if you enjoyed this program, you can help spread the word by leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, or the podcast platform of your choice. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2018, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Shannon Croft and used with permission. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.